What's up guys, I'm Chris Spaggs here, back with another Four Corners video for today's 15 game MLB main slate, courtesy of Osmo.com. With 15 games on the slate, that means we're going to have every team available and that means we're going to find some quality hitter somewhere, I'm sure. So right now, make sure to like the video and if you want to win a free month of Osmo Plus, comment your double dong pick down below. Yesterday we had a bunch of people get it right and I'll talk more about that later on, but for right now, like the video and comment your double dong pick if you want to win a free month of Osmo Plus. But for now, let's get on to the top pitching on today's slate and Charlie Morton going against Detroit should be the top owned option industry wide. Morton gets 2.7 implied runs against him, which are slate low and is expected to be the number one owned pitcher on DraftKings with 32%, on FanDuel with 25%, and on Yahoo with 45%. Detroit has a 26.1% K rate and 150 ISO versus right hand pitching on the year, with Travis Demerite the only hitter over 100 WRC plus in the lineup, while Morton has a 31% K rate of his own. This looks like a really good sure thing spot for Morton. I get you're going to have to pay up for him, but I think it's worth it today. I imagine I'll at least match the field on Morton's ownership. And Justin Verlander at Oakland also is a bit interesting with the 3.9 applied runs against him. Verlander will be number two owned on Yahoo 24%, but he'll be lesser owned elsewhere where he's a bit too pricey. Despite that high price, Verlander continues to be top flight pitching deep into games with a 35% carry and a 0.9 whip, despite some power struggles that could be an issue with the 194 ISO in Oakland's projected lineup. Oakland's been blasting the ball, including yesterday, so I could see people having some pause and going to Verlander. The talent is there, and I do think paying up from a bit today makes sense, even if you don't have to get a ton of ownership for him to get above the field. And Vince Velasquez versus San Diego should also be popular in some spots with the 4.3 implied runs against him. Velasquez will be number two owned on DraftKings at 22%, but it'll also be lesser owned elsewhere. Velasquez's 26% carry rate looks good against San Diego's 26.4% carry rate versus right-hand pitching, though Josh Naylor and Eric Hosmer do have some scary power against Velasquez's 235 ISO allowed to left-handed batters. Velasquez has a slate high 12% barrel ball rate, so there's some real power risk there. I think even if you have Velasquez today, it makes sense to get a few San Diego power bats in there who can take advantage of the power that Velasquez gives up. Now onto our next corner of the top stacks on the slate, and a Colorado stack against Sandy Alcantara will be popular today. Colorado gets 7.7 .7 implied runs, which are a slate high, and they project to be super chalked despite the huge slate against Alcantara's 5.6 XFIP and low 17% K rate. The top of Colorado's order looks significantly better than the bottom, though lefties could find value given Alcantara's low 13% K rate and higher 1.5 whips to left handed batters. Even though it is cores on a matchup against a mediocre pitcher in Alcantara, the ownership for Colorado is so high today that I imagine it makes sense to come under the field and try to find some other guys with upside elsewhere. A Boston stack versus Aaron Brooks also looks really good with the 7.3 implied runs for them. Brooks allows to 263 ISO with a 5.3 XFIP, while Boston's projected lineup crushes right-handed pitching with a 217 ISO and a 123 WRC+. To me, Boston looks like a viable course pivot with seven hitters over a 112 WRC+, plus versus right-hand pitching, and Brooks comparably bad versus both sides of the plate. Brooks isn't good, and the bullpen behind him also isn't good, so this is a really quality spot for Boston, and again, I think they're the best pivot on the slate to Colorado. And again, because of course, Miami stack versus John Gray will also have some ownership with five implied runs for them. Miami gets a huge park upgrade, but their 25% K rate and 124 ISO versus right hand pitching could be really bad news as chalk. Gray's 23.5% carry is just mad, but his price is reasonable against the poor Miami projected lineup, whose highest isolated power is Brian Anderson's 163. Miami can certainly get going with a big park upgrade they're getting, but they are not a good team versus righties, and this is still a spot where they could get blown away by John Gray. Now onto our next corner of the lower owned options on the slate, and the Mets stack going against Mike Montgomery is one of those teams. Mets get 5.2 implied runs, and they have the biggest differential between ownership and their chance to be a top stack according to our top stack tool, with Montgomery allowing a 1.6 whip and a 4.5% home run rate this year. Pete Alonso and Wilson Ramos have crushed left-handed pitching with both guys over a 147 WRC+, plus, and in a humid warm park today, this could be a low-owned team with real upside. The Mets just went wild yesterday versus Julio Tehran. They could carry the momentum today into a nice spot and another park upgrade at Kansas City. And the aforementioned John Gray versus Miami also interests me despite the five implied runs against him. Given the ownership for Miami and Gray's solid projection as value, Gray is an interesting leverage play with really good ability. With little power and five guys over league average and K rate in Miami's projected lineup, Gray can be risky, but he also offers some potential if Miami fails. Gray projects well with Miami's penchant for failing at pretty much any park. I think the spot is a good one, especially with Miami being as chalky as they look right now. And the Minnesota stack versus Mike Miner interests me with the five implied runs for them. Unlike Piano yesterday, Miner is a quality pitcher with a 1.2 whip and a 4.4 XFIP, but the scorching day at Texas and their own quality hitting can be good at low ownership today. Minnesota has a 239 ISO and a 126 WRC plus on the year versus left-hand pitching, and the weather can be a big asset with Miner capable of giving up contact and having a bad bullpen behind him as well. 
well. I don't think Miner's a bad pitcher, but with almost 100 degree weather in Texas today, Minnesota has so much power. If they make contact, that ball could go flying out of the park. And Patrick Sandoval at the White Sox also interests me with the 4.2 implied runs against him. Sandoval's had a solid 28% K rate in a limited sample size, while the White Sox's projected lineup brings a 24.4% K rate versus left hand pitching. There is some danger with four hitters over a 111 WRC plus in the White Sox lineup, but with John Gray decently owned at a similar price point, Sandoval could be a pivot if Miami succeeds. The White Sox are not a team to be terrified of, and Sandoval has shown some strikeout ability. I think it's a nice spot for him in lineups in which I'm not going to have John Gray. And now on to our last corner of the one offs, and CJ Krohn going against Mike Miner is one of those guys. Krohn is a 157 WRC plus and a 275 ISO versus left hand pitching with just a 22.4% K rate. So if he makes contact, that ball could be gone in the high 90 degrees heat. We talked about the weather, and Krohn is one of the better hitters in the lineup. I think it's a nice spot for him going against Mike Miner overall. And Mitch Moreland versus Aaron Brooks also interests me as a one off. Rafael Devers is a better left handed bat option, but Moreland is cheap with a 240 ISO versus Brooks, who allows a 6.2 XFIP and a 270 ISO to lefties. Moreland's cheap, and he should have guys on base in front of him given how bad Brooks is. I like the spot for Moreland again, that he has a really reasonable price as well industry wide. And Charlie Blackman versus Sandy Alcantara also looks good to me as a one off. Alcantara could get hit by anybody at Coors, but Blackman in the leadoff spot with a 247 ISO against the 5.5 XFIP that Alcantara gives up to lefties seems like a quality play for cash and tournaments. Blackman is priced up and also going to be very chalky, so if you want to get away from him, I get it, but I do think if I had to go to one one off in Colorado, he'd be the one I'm most willing to pay for today. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts on today's slate. So right now, please like the video. And if you want to win that free month of also plus comment your double dong pick down below. Yesterday, I know we had some double dong picks correctly, but unfortunately, Fantasy Cruncher is down for maintenance right now, so I can't confirm. So I have to circle back on Monday where I'll be giving away two memberships, including the one from yesterday. So right now, like the video and comment your double dong pick. And then tune in on Monday for our double giveaway that I'll be doing right after the weekend. But if you can't wait out this whole weekend for me to do the double double dong giveaway on Monday, you can also use this promo code switch and hedge for half off your first month of Osmo Plus. Get all the ownership projections, the player projections, the deep dive column, the lineup builder, the top stacks tool, a million different things that'll help you make better MLB DFS lineups every single day. So use that promo code switch and hedge right now for half off your first month of Osmo Plus. Go follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Chris Spags. My podcast comes out tomorrow. I've got a lot of content coming out in both the DFS space and otherwise. So check me out on Twitter and Instagram at Chris Spags. I'll be around tomorrow on our Live Before Lock show. So if you're around on a Saturday, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when we go live. And of course, I'll be back on Monday with that Four Corners video. So hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you guys again soon. Good luck.